Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the second webinar in Fire Safe Europe's data collection webinar series. I see that um, participants are arriving now. I'll give you another 10 seconds um, to join. So in the meantime, my name is Sarah dubich Christian and I'm the Public Affairs Officer for Fire Safe Europe. Fire Safe Europe is a unique alliance of fire experts, firefighters, uh, European associations and international companies and our mission is to improve fire safety in buildings for people. Now data collection is a big issue for fire safety in buildings and both the European Commission and the European Parliament have decided to tackle the problem uh, by establishing a fire information exchange platform and by funding a pilot project on data collection for fire safety in buildings. Throughout this webinar series, we will collect your input with the aim to formulate recommendations on how we could gather and analyze data at EU level. Today, we will focus on learning from another sector where data is, uh, is being successfully collected and analyzed for fire safety, namely uh, the maritime sector, which brings us to our speaker today, who's Mr. Sifis Papagiorgiu. He's a project officer at the European Maritime Safety Agency. He holds a master degree from the Faculty of Naval Architecture of the National Technical University of Athens. And he previously led an initiative for the European Maritime Safety Agency on issues relating to fires on Boro decks. This initiative led to the Fire Safe 1 and then Fire Safe 2 study, which is about to be finalized. And Sifis will tell us more about this today. Just a little housekeeping uh, before we get started. Everybody will be muted throughout the webinar and as such, if you have questions for our speakers, please uh, type them in the Q&A box in the Zoom control panel and we will address them after the presentation during the, the Q&A session. If you want to tweet, uh, the hashtag is EUCanBeFireSafe. I will put those housekeeping rules in the chat box so you can have a look at the same uh, at any time. The webinar will be recorded and put on YouTube and registrations to the webinar will be sent a direct link. Now, without further ado, I give the floor to Mr. Sifis Papagiorgiou. Thank you very much. Uh, it is an enormous pleasure for me to, to be here in this virtual space uh, and for this great initiative. And since we, uh, we have a lot of material to go through, I will, I will go directly into, into our subject. Um, and as was mentioned, today's subject is more linked to the maritime industry. And as a matter of fact, um, it, this is not a new subject. The, and this very specific topic that I will talk about today, and this is uh, on fires on roro decks of passenger ships and roro decks are practically the garages of, of ferries. Uh, we all know them, uh, I think, especially in Europe, uh, in a lot of countries, uh, we, we, we travel with, with these ferries and they are very important for commerce. In any case, um, at the International Maritime Organization, that is what IMO stands for. In 2012, there was an analysis of accidents from 1994 up to 2004 to 2012, uh, excuse me, saying that there was a, a number of accidents taking place and also that there was no sign of them diminishing. So what happened and made us really kick off this initiative was this accident. It, it is the Norman Atlantic. Some of you may, may, may have heard of it. Um, it. It was on the 28th of December 2014. Um, a, a ship, a ferry traveling from uh, Igumenita to, uh, to, to Italy, to, to Ancona. Um, it caught fire. It had a lot of trouble. Uh, I won't go into the details of the of the accident. The accident investigation report is publicly available. For uh, officially, there are eighteen fatalities and four injuries. What we actually got to do right after the accident is, apart from the work that IMO had done, which you can see in the blue columns uh, to the left of this graph, which are all the accidents of all the fires 
that started in garages of uh, ferries, of passenger ferries up to 2011, we used uh, an EMSA database, uh, this EMSIP database, um, to also analyze accident that ha accidents that happened after 2011, so 2012 to 2015. And you can see that yearly there, is, there are um, a good number of accidents occurring. One could say, um, of course, it, it, almost, it almost seems like an increase of, of accidents. We, we do not believe so. We believe we have a better reporting system uh, at the moment. Uh, but of course, as you can see, we, we actually counted in 2013, for example, a record year of uh, uh, 12 accidents. Um, and, and that is really a high number because the MSIP database is focusing only on European accidents. So what was the, the initiative that, that we decided to take? First of all, we, we decided to have an annual workshop on, on, on this subject. Uh, which started taking place in 2015. Uh, in this workshop, there was participation from maritime administrations and accident investigation bodies. We had regular consultation with these experts. And of course, we uh, commissioned two studies, FireSafe 1 and FireSafe 2, uh, which were conducted by RICE, Bureau Veritas and Stena Line, both of them. Uh, and the results of these studies I'm going to present very, very shortly right now, or, or practically I'm going to present the results of FireSafe 1 and the, the main, let's say, outline on, of FireSafe 2, which was just finalized. So the FireSafe 1 study, uh, it was mainly focused on, on gathering data, so gathering statistics that we could use, and focusing on two stages, let's say, of, of the generic... Uh, it's a fire uh, risk model that, that you can have, starting at the ignition and then also at the extinguishment. Uh, this was the, let's say, a very initial um, model that we had. Uh, of course, at, the, at later stages, we, we developed that much further. Uh, so as an example, uh, the FireSafe 1 produced a lot of statistics. A good example is, is this. I think, uh, as you can see, um, we think this is a very important, uh, let's say, result that 90% of these fires that we are talking about originate in the cargo being transported. Now, th this is an important finding because it makes prevention almost impossible it, 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 because if, if we would talk about, let's say, stricter rules or controls of, of cars and vehicles coming into, uh, into these ferries, it will probably mean uh, trade disruption. And it, it is typically the thing that uh, operators do not want to see. And of course, it's not always possible. Uh, but in any case, it, it was a very interesting finding. Um, the, the FireSafe 1 and FireSafe 2, they were both uh, based on the IMO's formal safety assessment, which is a, a risk analysis tool. And as such, it's full of, of these things, uh, fall trees and, um, and, and probabilities. But of course, the important thing here is that everywhere the, the decision and the support to, to the decision makers is through data so that this decision can be uh, a well-informed decision. So of course, this is not easy to read. So let's zoom in. Uh, as I said before, th this is what it looks like and also you can see in the small plugs here because we were looking into electrical faults as well within uh, these accidents. So you can see here 90% being, as, as I already said, in ship cargo. And from this, you can see from the 90%, 47%, or actually 40%, 47% of the whole, because it, it, it adds with the 43% that you see next to it, the vehicles and the cargo units. And it goes down uh, in, in, in even more detail as to what is 
uh, the reefer fires, which were very high, one in three uh, such fires come from reefer units, which is, uh, was also very, a very good and very worrying finding. And uh, of course, that overall, some sort of electrical source had a 64% uh, for these fires. So th these were some really good findings that helped us go towards the right direction. So, <coughs> excuse me. With that, what, what did we do? Uh, a typical tool of a, of a risk analysis in, in that sense is also a cost-benefit assessment. And uh, this was done all for existing ships and, and, and new buildings. And you can see here a number of what we call uh, risk control options, uh, practically solutions uh, that, that could help mitigate the risk. Uh, and you see the pieces of the pie that are green were uh, found to be cost efficient. So you have, for example, uh, robust connection boxes, which is, is, a, is, a, is a series of measures for the connection boxes of reefer units, mainly uh, because we, we had found that a lot of faults in these boxes could lead to fires, so th this was uh, this was one of the reasons. And, and of course, you can see that there is a lot of focus on electrical fires. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see some uh, risk control options on fire suppression. Uh, again, I won't go into into the details. These are still under under discussion. Um, fire two, which reasonably focus on the other stages of the fire, which were not covered by fire safe one so you see here and that's why i said before it was not complete because it was missing the detection part and as a matter of fact it's uh usually uh, by now it even has a detection first response and then decision extinguishment but anyway i won't go into into detail of that but uh so fire safe two looked into detection decision containment and evacuation so uh, detection and decision, what, what do we mean by, by detection? And, and well, it's, it's a typical thing, of course, that you may have. Uh, we do have fixed detection systems in these garages, but do we have fixed detection system for, for all of these? Uh, you will be surprised to know that, for example, for what we call weather decks, um, or not surprised actually. So decks that are open to, uh, to the weather, there is no requirement for a detection system. Um, there are of course a lot of requirements for patrolling and we, we looked at a lot of different solutions here as well, like combination of smoke and heat detections and closing side openings. This is, this is also something that is quite specific, I think, to, to our industry, but uh, it, it has led to a lot of problems uh, when it comes to detection, but also, of course, containment and in, in some cases, uh, fire spread through the openings and hampered evacuation, made it impossible. Um, and then for the decision, we also saw that uh, a ship being, let's say, uh, such a uh, hierarchical structure, sometimes th there are problems, of course, with, with the management of these fires. And although uh, the crew members uh, have uh, fire training, of course, they are not professional firefighters. And I think that this, this should be absolutely clear uh, to, to, to everyone. And, of course, and, and this has its, its, uh, its shortcomings. I think uh, crews should usually be, be able to do some first response uh, to the fire through, with a small hose possibly and a fire extinguisher. But after that, at least in Europe, the, the main direction that we have is to uh, to turn on the fixed system as soon as possible. When it comes to containment and evacuation, again, there were other risk control options that were looked, or in some cases, even the same as you can see here, openings again, a very, very important problem for ships. Um, on the weather deck, again, as, as I said, this doesn't seem like a containment issue, but uh, fire monitors or uh, water cannons are, are, as, uh, 
as some may call them, uh, to, to be put on these, on these decks. And of course, uh, this study also looked through with simulations and tests uh, to an optimal distance of LSA. LSA, sorry for the abbreviation, is life-saving appliances from the side openings. Apart from, from these two parts, which uh, have produced a lot of, a lot of uh, really good results and proposals and recommendations for um, decision making and then some rule amendments and some inclusions in, in guidelines, which we think are very useful at the moment and are currently being discussed. Uh, at IMO. The, the study also included some uh, detection testing uh, on the Stena Scandinavica. This was a very, very good uh, experience and this was very pro positive for, for uh, the project because usually uh, most of the testing is done in, in lab, in, in the lab, in lab facilities. So this was a very good opportunity for us to actually test with a burner uh, detection systems and you can see here one of the systems the, the one in the lower lower picture is a thermal imaging camera which had very good results actually as a detection system for the uh, as we said before weather deck um, and the second uh, or the upper uh, right uh, picture it only shows the burner, but the second t system that we tested is a fiber optic uh, linear heat detection system, which, as a matter of fact, also gave some promising uh, results. This is also a very promising uh, detection system, we think, if used at least in combination. Of course, heat detection is usually slower than, uh, than smoke detection, but in some cases, at least in, in the environment that you may have on, on what we call an open deck, and this is different from a weather deck, sorry for the different definitions, uh, but an open deck meaning that it may have openings to the side, so you have a lot of ventilation, and a lot of the times, um, smoke detection systems are quite late with, with the detection of, of such fires. And I think this test uh, confirmed this uh, by showing that uh, the, the, the tested system detected the fire while the conventional system did not, uh, which doesn't prove something, but it, to our view, it, it was a useful test to, to have. The expected impact from, from all of these studies I, and, and the work that we have done. So, first of all, what we have seen since 2015 um, is that we see a, an increased industry and administration awareness and proactivity, uh, not only in Europe, but, but also in, uh, coming from other parts of the world, uh, also from Japan and, uh, and China. Japan also had a very serious uh, incident uh, in, 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 I think, 2015 as well. Um, so, uh, and, and this makes the industry also improve and we, we see this as, as a very positive step. We see the industry taking uh, initiatives without, uh, let, let's say, going in, in advance of the regulators uh, installing, for example, uh, water monitors like, like I, I, I mentioned before, uh, or closing openings or, or doing all these steps, trying to find solutions to, to this problem. So I think there, there is an understanding and, there is, uh, uh, and it's clear for everyone that this is an issue and this is positive. We, we have seen a, a reduction of serious fires. We, we hope that this trend will continue. Um, then there is, as I said, uh, a current regulatory work at IMO, which is ongoing, and we hope that it will lead to some regulatory changes and some guidelines, uh, which will improve uh, safety and reduce the risk from, from this issue. And, of course, coming from, from the two... Uh, uh, points above, we, we, we think that there is an overall uh, risk reduction and in, in terms of, of the risk analysis that we did and the, the analysis is usually quantified in terms of loss of life property and cargo. Uh, 
they would claim uh, here at EMSA that there is a reduction of, let's say, risk in terms of loss of life, property, and cargo. And with that, um, I would like to yeah, finish my, my presentation and uh, give it back to you to open up for the Q&A. Thank you, Sifis, for a really beautiful and insightful presentation. Actually covered all the questions for today. Uh, and, um, and I would like to say, well, thank you very much, Sifis, uh, for giving us so much food for thought. It's actually pretty clear that there's a lot we can learn on fire safety from the maritime sector and most likely from other sectors too. And we definitely need to look at how to apply this knowledge to fire safety in buildings, uh, in buildings specifically. I also want to thank everyone who joined us for this webinar today. Uh, with 2018 coming to an end, so is the first part of our data collection webinar series. However, we will continue having webinars on the topic of data collection for fire safety in 2019. And you'll get more information on these webinars uh, early next year. Now, before we end this webinar today, we wanted to invite all of you uh, in the fire safety community, not only buildings, also beyond, uh, to have a say about the upcoming webinar. So please let us know if you have any suggestions on topic that you wish the webinar series to cover, or if you have something you want to share and would like to be a speaker in this webinar series, uh, we'll, we'll very much like to hear from you. So thank you, uh, see you uh, and see you next time and, and we will end the, the webinar now. Have a lovely afternoon.